Wow, well, in person. In person. Thank you for being here. Oh. I missed seeing you. I, yeah, well, we I, were missed, zooming. I missed you uh, not being able to say unmute to me. I mean, you know, <laughs> exactly. Geez, How, do you always get a long uh, standing ovation like that? What's the longest? At home. <laughs> oh, wow. No, yeah. that's that's lovely. I, I more than appreciate it. I'm so glad to be here. Uh, I, I, I was uh, cheering you on. I was watching the Critics' Choice Award the other night, and you received the Lifetime Achievement Award. It was very nice. Uh, yeah, it was great. Uh, it was amazing. Do you, I mean, for all the things you've done, it's got to feel great. It, it was a little scary, because when they, cause they call and they say it's a lifetime achievement, it, my, did they know something? I don't know <laughs> yeah, what, exactly what, right. what's, what's happening. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was really nice to be in front of people again, in, you know, in, in a, a beautiful setting, and people were getting back to normal, and, yeah. and, and that, was, that was really nice. And it was nice. I saw uh, uh, Jimmy Kimmel gave you, uh, gave you the award. Yes, he made the speech. Yeah, and it was—it was—he was great because Jimmy's yeah, also he's terrific. Fantastic. And when I came out, I said, "This is awkward." I—I I had asked for Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> <laughs> now what do I do? It was really funny. <clears throat> He's yep. right over here. What do I do? What do I do now? Yeah, yeah, it was great. It was perfect. He was good. But uh, I remember, you know, I heard you to telling the story when we first met, and then you came over to the. We were shooting Analyze This. Yes. And you came over to the hotel. Yeah. And we talked for like two hours about characters and what to do and what to and and you were so and then, nice to and me. And then here you are, you know. I, I'll never forget it as long as I live. And it was that, that you took the time to even talk to me. And you're like, Jimmy, write, just keep writing. And yeah, you and, gave and me great people advice. and and that's really you know eventually how this musical ends up being because Buddy Young was a character that I first did on an HBO special in 1984 called The Comics Line, where it was a parody of uh, a chorus line, so I played all these different people, yeah. and he was one of them, and he was like a hack comedian, you know, with a bad prom tuxedo. Yes. And it was, I am Buddy and Junior from Las Vegas, Nevada, and boy, is my son stupid. That was the... <laughs> Comes in with a lump of dog crap on his hand and says, Pop, I almost stepped in this. You know? <laughs> it's unbelievably dumb. So then, when I brought him here to SNL, when I came here in 1984, oh, yeah, yeah and building. then we brought him here, and then, and then I had him at the news desk. He was a restaurant critic, right? And then I did a special called Don't Get Me Started, which I know you, you happen to really love. I think it's one of the I think it's the best special that's ever Oh, thanks. Ever it was a lot of fun. On HBO. It was and then we did the film, Mr. Saturday Night, in 1991. So 30 years later, you know, when we did the movie, I was, I was 40. Yeah. Right? And the character's 73 in the movie, so it was like five hours of makeup every day and so on. So now I turned 74 on Monday, so they have to make me look younger. So this is, <laughs> wow! So that's a thrill. I just, I just show up. I just yeah. show up now. Yeah. By the way, happy belated birthday. Thank uh, you. I really, I, uh, yeah. I we love you. But, be be believe me, it's my pleasure. But you yeah. share you share the birthday with uh, your... my grandson Griffin. Yeah. Yeah. He turned nine. I didn't. And um, <laughs> and so I had I had to fly to Los Angeles for this award, and I didn't tell them that I was coming. I wanted to surprise him. So we're birthday buddies, and it means a lot to both of us. So we, my, my amazing wife, Janice, gets this huge carton. And we called him up, and I may believe I was at rehearsal in New York. And I said, I got to go, but, you know, there's a big present for you. So it's on this front, you know, so maybe you'll, you, you'll go pick it up, and uh, I love you, and I hope to see you. But I got to go. I'm in rehearsal. I was, you know, two minutes away. <laughs> and so I got into the box. This is insane. Yeah, and I heard him coming up this, the steps. So here's, here's the last moments of, of me opening up the box, and I'm, and I'm in it. And you, his, you, you videotaped his reaction. For, yeah, I had my phone inside in the dark. Here we go. Check this out. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> I mean, come on. Is that the best? You can't pay for that. No, no. Is that cool. the greatest? Yeah. That's a genuine laugh. Yeah. Right yeah. there. Oh, it's yeah. so cool. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, they're gonna. Do they know your work? Do they? Have they seen you? Yeah, yeah. They 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 you know they catch up because you can find anything. You know. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah you're and, right. And um, so the, he's a little he's a little comedy nerd. Yeah. With Griffin. He Good. he'll watch something and he'll be like he'll be like me and he he won't laugh much. He'll just go. Yep. Funny. <laughs> you analyze it. Funny. Yeah. yeah funny. I, th I thought I knew everything you did, and, uh, you know, I'm a student of, of yours, and I, I <laughs> love your stuff, but I, you were telling me that you, Buddy Young Jr. was on uh, Update, and I'm like, I don't remember, because I remember him from Don't Get Me Started, but he was a restaurant critic. A restaurant critic, yeah. The, Christopher Guest was the host of Update. That's right. And so Buddy now was an insult comic, 
I know, but I would do these. So here's roast records. people. Roast people. So then Dick Ebersole, produced that, that year for us, said, uh, we have some famous people in the audience. What do you want to do? Do you want to... And I said, I'll just go after them. Let me... Who, who is it? So it was just live, and, and it happened to be the one and only Johnny Cash was in the audience. This... So here's a little clip from 37 years ago from two, two stories up. And this is live, no script, no one knew... No, no, no. It's going to happen. Billy Crystal, check this out. And you must be... Uh... Johnny Cash. Who cares? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Good to see you working with new colors these days, Johnny. Well, you believe he's got the Portuguese flag around his throat? Johnny, from the bottom of my heart, it's over. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, seriously. I kid, Johnny. He's a big star. Does Jack Lord know you have his hair? <laughs> we need love today. Oh, excuse me. Oh, I was almost Jewish again. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. You don't, yeah. you don't get uh, intimidated when you see Johnny Cash and Waylon Jennings sitting right next yeah, to him. Yeah, it was Waylon Jennings. So I said, when did you go Hasid? I didn't know that you wanted Hasid. Because <laughs> he had this big hat on it. And Christopher Reeve was there, too. And, you know, it was just loose and just fun. And so then, you know, this character just stays with me. And so we did the film, but then Mel Brooks called me in 2004 when I was finishing up my run of 700 Sundays. God, you were great. But, like, but I know, can we just say for a second how great you were in 700 Sundays on Broadway? One of my favorite shows oh, I ever you. saw. And Thanks. I, uh, I, I remember I, I, I saw it twice because I was like, I had to do this again. I had to experience it. It was so funny, but oh, emotional. And it was... Uh, it was just a fun night. Cause yeah. Do you remember I was there that you, night? And Sandy Koufax was there with Joe Torre. Yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, was and we like... went out for like till 3 o'clock in the morning just <laughs> talking about baseball and stuff. It was like the Is greatest. It... Do you, yeah. do you like having people visit you oh, yeah, yeah. backstage and say hi? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's know. only one person who ever disappointed me um, backstage. Who? The Geico Gecko. Oh. Uh, but, you know, it's interesting <laughs> because, first of all, he's a little arrogant. And, wow. And yeah. with the accent and the whole thing. And it's, oh. like, it's like meeting uh, Tom Cruise. He's a little smaller in person. Oh, <laughs> That's very and, interesting. Yeah, it's like it's, about this, and, and then yeah. he, he hands me a script. Could nah. you read it? Could oh, you no, you don't have time yeah, for no, this stuff. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry to hear that. No, so Mel Brooks calls me at the end of, of the run, uh, and he says, Listen, Billy, I got two ideas. Here's the first. Um, I'd like you to be Max Bialystok and the producers come across the street. You'll do it for six months. Whatever you want to do, it's yours. So I said, Mel, I love you. I don't want to be the fifth person to play Max Bialystok. Yeah. He said, you won't. You'll be the twelfth. <laughs> <laughs> but it, and then this company, there's people in London said, would Mr. Saturday Night be a musical, do you think? So I just started thinking about it then, put it away. And then over time, I went back to our original writers, who you know very well, Lowell Gans and Bob, Bob Lumendel. Mandel, the best. And yes. we wrote the movie together. And we started fashioning the musical. And it got better and better and better and better. And here we're going to... Start previews March 29th, and we open April 27th. I hope you can make that. Okay, the show, I have to say, is it's hilarious. It's really touching. The music is phenomenal. A great composer, Jason Robert Brown, and Amanda Green wrote the lyrics. And it's beyond, It's the best version of this character because have you ever sang on? Yeah, well, you know, I sang in, the last time in college and in, uh, in Finian's Rainbow. I was the leprechaun. <laughs> wow. Perfect timing for today, a Jewish Happy leprechaun. Day yet. And um, and then on the Oscars, I would sing when I was on the Oscars. I, but but this is I've been training for a year, and I have like eight songs. The music is spectacular. It's hilarious. Uh, and, boy, I couldn't be more excited about it. I'm going to be here open-ended, so I'm, I'm here. Oh, but, I'm, but you're going to get tired of me. Uh, no, Buddy, <laughs> Buddy Young Jr., this, the story is basically he's a, oh, like a comic who's kind of... He's down and out. He's, he's not doing well. He had some problems in the 50s uh, mentally, and his show got canceled. And now, present day, 1994, in the, in the, in the show, he's got a chance to make a comeback. And so now he gets his brother back, who was his manager, played once again by David Paymer, That's who was nominated for an Oscar for the movie, That's for his really... Best Supporting Actor. And with a, we have an amazing cast, Shoshana Bean, uh, Randy Graff, uh, Chanson Harmon, and it's, it's tremendous. And in the, getting his comeback going, he realizes his family is suffering and they don't, they don't have enough of him. So it really becomes about pulling his, his estranged daughter back in the fold 
and healing his family. So it's it's got a lot of stuff in it that's beautiful. Uh, I can't wait. And Me uh, either. Uh, I'm really, I will be there. Mr. Saturday Night, break a leg. Billy Crystal, everybody. <laughs> Mr. Saturday Night begins previews March 29th on Broadway. Billy and I are doing something fun after the break. Come on back, everybody. It's good, it's good. Hey.